Hey everyone, Keenan Crow here, and I'm here today to do an unboxing on my new audio interface, the Fireface UCX2. I'm very excited about this interface. Uh, I think it's the right one for me at uh, this time because my other one uh, right now is failing. And I'll go over um, why I chose this specific one, but right now I am just dying to open this box. So let's go ahead and uh, get in here. Warranty cards and whatnot. Power supply. Both Euro and US. USB. Oh, and this is nice. Uh, they've done a USB-B to USB-C cable. Um, see if there's also an A to B in there. I kind of hope so, that would make sense. But also I get why um, they would include just this one. And of course this this will work with my uh, Mac, but regardless, the A to B are, are uh, pretty prolific. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I was gonna say, that seems like a kind of an oversight. So you have both the uh, B to A and B to C. So depending on uh, what your computer uses at the moment, if you've got a newer MacBook Pro, it's obviously gonna use the C. Uh, if you've got an older one, it's probably gonna use the A. Uh, if you have a PC, maybe you have a mix of the two. I know this machine behind me has both, um, but very cool that they included uh, both of those in there. This is uh, an optical cable for ADAT uh, light pipe. Uh, which I know they use and which a number of my other interfaces use as well. Um, the other things that are in here are uh, the breakout cable. So uh, this breaks out both the SPDIF and the AES EBU uh, serial, which is uh, again, very nice that they're including all the cabling here. And then here is the actual unit. Um, this is the Fireface itself. As you can see um, up front, we've got two uh, combo jacks, which are just uh, mic in line. They're not instrument uh, level at all, but these two are. These are two independent line or instrument uh, inputs, as well as a headphone out on the, the front. Um, on the back here, we've got, uh, as I said, the AAS, uh, EBU, and SPDIF breakouts. Uh, the USB-B port, um, a Durek port, which is kind of an interesting feature if you ever play uh, live gigs or anything and you just want to record right to your USB drive that is there. Uh, a word clock in, uh, if you're doing external clocking, like I said before, ADET light pipe, both in and out. Um, and kind of a cool feature on this one that I haven't seen on a lot of other units is uh, the SPDIF and the ADAT can be used simultaneously. They don't have to be separated out. Um, MIDI in and out with the standard five pin DIN. A lot of new manufacturers are going to the uh, eighth inch jack, which you know is fine, but you always kind of need an adapter. And all my MIDI gear has the five pin DIN, so uh, I prefer that. Uh, six line out puts. So uh, you could do several sets of monitors. You could do a full 5.1 surround sound mix, etc. Uh, and then uh, four additional line inputs, which is kind of what drew me to the unit because I need uh, lots of line inputs due to my load boxes, uh, which all output TRS. And so uh, because I have two outputs from each load box in stereo, that's four line outputs that I need just for um, the guitar rig. Um, so this will be uh, well used. All right, so that's what's in the box. Um, let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in and get the drivers installed and let's check out these legendary RME drivers that I have heard so much about. They're supposed to be ultra low latency. Um, and the other kind of interesting thing that we'll be able to explore is that there's also a class compliant mode in this. So we'll be able to kind of compare and contrast between what you would get on a uh, much cheaper interface, which are normally some sort of class compliant driver, uh, depending on, on the company that you got it from, and the proprietary RME drivers, which I expect will be substantially better. We'll also shoot it out against my older interface, which is a Focusrite uh, Pro 24 DSP in the Sapphire line. So that's Firewire. So we'll be able to test uh, a few different variables here all at once. So let's go check it out. 
All right, so we're here in Ableton. I've got the Sapphire plugged in. I've got the Focusrite plugged in. Um, and as you can hear, because I have to switch between them, you're getting phone audio, which is what you were getting before as well, because as I mentioned, the Sapphire has some component level failures, so it doesn't sound very good. I realize that's not ideal in a video about a high quality audio interface, uh, but we've got what we've got, and that's why we bought the new interface, right? So that we could improve our audio quality. So let's take a look at um, what we We've got in here. So, um, just starting out, uh, 44, 100, 64 samples. That gives us an overall latency of 755. This is kind of my go-to setting for tracking with the Sapphire. Um, so let's see what the Fireface can give us on this. Uh, 469. So not not quite half, but like a 40% reduction on uh, latency there, which is incredibly impressive. Uh, let's check just a couple other settings as well. So um, this is probably my go-to for like mixing. Looks like 13.4 uh, on the Fireface. 7.5, oh, nope, that's not right, I was gonna say, okay. And then 16.3 um, on the Sapphire, so again, uh, quite a significant decrease. Um, let's check another here. So 882, and then let's go at like 128. On the Sapphire, that is 829. On the Fireface. Is 448 which is incredible. Um, and then let's bump this up to 256. So that's 738 on the Fireface, on the Sapphire, 112. Um, and this number in particular is pretty important. So, um, and the reason that is, is because I I like this, um, plug-in called Amcrack 1992 by Kazrog. Uh, but it is a significant CPU hog. <laughs> Not the worst CPU hog. Uh, there are much worse uh, plugins out there in terms of CPU usage. Um, but the thing about the uh, Kazrog is I like to actually play it in real time. And that requires me to have kind of a sub 10 second-ish or so latency. That's about where I like it. Um, and it sounds really good, uh, at least to my ear, at 88.2 rather than 44.1. Now I realize there is um, oversampling in the settings. Um, I don't currently have oversampling on, as you can see. I just wanna keep this uh, very straightforward in terms of, of how usable this is gonna be for me um, and not complicate with a bunch of different stuff that you guys don't need. Uh, so you'll see uh, we keep clipping the CPU even at this uh, setting with the Sapphire um, and it's 11.2, so it's over that, that kind of 10 goal that I have. So let's check out how the Fireface does at that level. And that's 7.3. Um, that's way, way, way more doable. And I don't see any CPU spikes on there. And so that really solves my problem in terms of being able to track with this plugin that I think is amazing. It's probably the best sounding uh, 5150 emulation out there. Um, so this is, is very, very cool. Uh, this is exactly what I got the interface for was this low latency uh, and the longevity, which is we'll discuss here in a moment. All right, and now let's take a look at kind of the total results. I also threw this into class compliant mode, which is an option um, that the device has primarily so that you can connect it with an iPad. Um, if you wanted to use it with an iOS device, that is something you would do in class compliant mode. You wouldn't want to do that on a Mac or a PC. You'd always want to use uh, the RME drivers and here you can see why. So uh, smaller scores are better here. Um, you will find that 
Uh, the Fireface in class compliant mode is the worst out of all of them. The yellow line, the blue line is the Sapphire Pro 24. And that green line at the bottom, which consistently outperforms both of the other lines, is the uh, proprietary RME drivers for the Fireface UCX2. Overall, uh, we get 30% faster latency times than the Sapphire Pro and 68% faster than the class compliant drivers. Uh, so quite a bit faster, kind of all across the board. It varies from bit to bit. At some points, it was about 50% faster than the Sapphire Pro, etc. But overall, just very impressive numbers out of this unit. All right, so now let's take a look at um, basically every interface that I've ever owned. I guess I did own a really super cheap RCA one uh, before this that came with like a keyboard or something. But um, really the, the only three serious interfaces um, that I've ever owned, uh, the Mackie Onyx 1220i, the Focusrite Sapphire Pro 24 DSP, and now this RME uh, Fireface UCX2. Um, why did I go with the Fireface? Why didn't I just go with another Focusrite? Why didn't I go with another uh, Mackie? You know, what what is the deciding factor with all this? Um, and I'd say the number one thing, at least for me, is longevity. This is the first interface that I actually ever bought, the 1220i. And it's part live mixer and part Firewire interface. Um, the thing about this one is that the support for this was hilariously short, like almost as if it were a joke, short. Um, this unit came out, it launched in uh, 2010, uh, which would have been at the time uh, Leopard, Mac OS Leopard, which at the time was called OS X Leopard. Um, and the drivers were supported through OS 10.8, which was uh, Mountain Lion. And so that means that this officially had about three years of driver support. And that is quite honestly pathetic. Um, for all of the other things that I like about this kind of a setup, I like having the physical faders, I like having uh, the physical EQ on board. I think the preamps actually sound very good for what they are. Um, the focus rights are pretty sterile. These actually have a little bit of character to them. Um, but three years of driver support is just horrendous. That means you're buying another interface every three years and the cost to that just adds up astronomically. Um, not to mention there were some other problems with this as well. Now this is, is something that uh, I physically damaged, but even before the physical damage, there were capacitors going out, the faders um, were doing wonky things in the stereo field. Um, there have been all sorts of kind of component level problems with this in addition to the lack of software support. So this is headed to the dumpster. And again, I will never buy another Mackie product because of it. On the other hand, the Focusrite Sapphire, I actually have been pretty okay with. Now, there have been some component level failures, which is why I am replacing this finally, and it is out of support as well. Um, I'm currently on uh, Mac OS Catalina, uh, which is 1015, and this was supported through Catalina. It came out in 2009, which means it was supported through about 2019, which is when Big Sur came out. Uh, so that's a 10 year lifespan. That's good for driver support. That is, you know, uh, respecting your customers enough to keep developing the product for a reasonable length of time. Three years versus 10 years uh, is like night and day. Again, though, because this was so cheap, there have been some component things in here. You know, you, you really do get what you pay for. Uh, for instance, right now the line inputs don't match anymore. One is six or seven decibels lower than the other. Um, there are problems with the output jacks. There are problems with the headphone jacks. Some of them uh, only work in uh, one <laughs> channel at this point. And so, you know, even though the software support was great, and even though I really did love this unit and I think the support on it was good, uh, I th there is a, a total world of difference in the components used in an RME product compared to this class of Focusrite product. Now I know that their Claret series is, 
you know, very, very different. And so I did seriously consider the Claret. Um, but RME goes above and beyond with drivers as well. So this is the UCX2. Its predecessor was the UCX that came out in 2012. That still has current drivers up through um, Monterey, which is Mac OS 12. So that is a decade at least. The version before that, the uh, Fireface UC, not the UCX, but the UC, came out the same year that this Focusrite unit did, and it still has support all the way through Monterey. So going on, uh, you know, 13 years now, that is impressive to have that much support and to have this level of components in this unit. So I'm really trying to break the cycle of having to rebuy products over and over again. I expect this unit to last me over a decade, which is why I went with it in the first place. And I expect it to be humming uh, along just fine <laughs> in 2032, as well as it is right now. So just something to consider. If you are looking for a new audio interface, if you're looking for some of these features and you're looking for something that has rock solid drivers, as we saw with the driver test, uh, and also can get you the level of support you want, you know, going on 13 years for the unit that was uh, two units ago, this really can't be me. I really uh, am happy with my purchase and I hope you would consider an RME product in the future.